Welcome to all of you. I have just now unmuted your phone lines if you've called in. We have several people that are logging on right now, and uh, this is Michael Cheney uh, up here in Tallahassee. Uh, we're just now getting started. Uh, we're going to give about two more minutes for people to uh, sign in. Can you all hear me okay? Yes. yes. Very good. Okay. Well, while we're waiting for a second, let me ask of those who have uh, called in so far, and it looks like, you know, there's more people who are signed in than who have called in. Uh, ten people have actually called in so far. Uh, but uh, let me let all of you unmute your lines. That's time. Oh, so we just oh, want to do this to do it. Uh, let me ask, um, of those who can, uh, who can hear me, is there anybody who is logged on where there's, uh, there's more than two people sitting in front of a speakerphone? Maybe there's three or more. Anybody like that? Okay, so they yes. Oh, which community is that? Which community has, uh, three or more? Lake Club. Lake Club? Oh, great. Well, good to have y'all. Uh, is it three people, or do y'all have more than that around the table? Five. Five. Holy cow. You got the speaker phone on. I'm curious, are y'all all looking at one computer screen, or are you projecting up what's on the computer screen? <laughs> We're projecting up. All right. Y'all are high tech. <laughs> hey, listen, uh, we have a fairly full house of uh, 25 jurisdictions that are signed up. For this event, for right now, I'm going to put you uh, your phones back on um, uh, mute just so that uh, not, no disturbing side conversations or whatever. We'll be getting started very soon. Okay, so once again, I have unmuted all the phone lines. I want to say good morning to you. This is Michael Cheney from up in Tallahassee uh, with the Florida Housing Coalition, and very happy that you could uh, all join us. We're going to make the most of your 90 minutes. We'll get started right now, even as still some people are signing on. Uh, and I want to start off by uh, just kind of a couple of just logistical things here, like... Um, uh, uh, letting you know that uh, we we want to have your questions uh, uh, and, and integrate that into what I'm sharing with you today about the web annual report. Um, a couple times during the presentation, I'm going to unmute all the phone lines, just like we have right here, and uh, open up the, the floor for questions. And uh, even before then, I want to point out that on the right-hand side of the screen, you can very likely see that there is um, a question and answer box. So feel free to also type in your question as, uh, as we're going along with this presentation. In 90 minutes, I'm going to be doing a lot of talking and showing you things right here on, this, uh, uh, on your web screen there. 
Uh, but uh, in order to do that, um, it, I, sometimes I'm able to actually look at those questions that you're typing in there and uh, and integrate the answers to those in, in what I'm saying as the most relevant moment pops up to do so. And uh, so we have a majority of the folks that uh, that are to be on our call here. Here's another thing is... Uh, this and this PowerPoint that you've uh, that you've received is something that we're going to be starting off with in this training to uh, um, you know to introduce you to a couple of beginning concepts. But certainly, I need to show you the web annual report. So I'm going to be doing that too. And uh, so at some point, we're going to you know stop looking at this uh, this PowerPoint. But the, the PowerPoint, I think you'll find may be handy in uh, just generally. Um, being a source of notes for you, uh, even after this, this call. And I've also provided some handouts that I'll be making, uh, reference to. Let me just refresh this screen. And, uh, alright, so I've unmuted all the phone lines. Do we have anybody from Florida Housing staff on the line? Nobody here yet. I was going to introduce them, uh, but I can't do that until they get here. And in the meantime, I'm just going to come back to that in just a second. In the meantime, let's go ahead and get started. We only have 90 minutes here. Uh, and we're going to get started with um, with what's new. Well, there's a lot of things that are new. I think we can all agree. Uh, and um, uh, so one thing is that uh, uh, we didn't get any uh, – the, the legislature did not fund the SHIP program in 0910. That's, that's definitely new. Uh, of course, there is a new program, Florida Home Buyer Opportunity Program. Uh, there's all kinds of stimulus coming down to uh, Florida from the federal government. 166 million in weatherization assistance program money. Uh, a second round of neighborhood stabilization program dollars. There's plenty that's new, and you kind of hope uh, that in that sea of new things that there might be some, you know, some harbor of. Uh, of unchanging uh, uh, stability, and uh, that's what I always thought the SHIP annual report was, but oh, no, that's changing too. Uh, now there is a web-based annual report that Florida Housing, your funder, wants you to use um, for this next, uh, this next set of annual reports, which are due on September 15th. And, uh, you know, so you will receive very shortly, if you have not already, and if somebody from your uh, city or county will receive an email saying, hey, here is the email address of our main contact for your city or county, and uh, then some instructions on how you can sign in and look around the web annual report. It is live today. I mean, not just today. It's been live for uh, a while now, uh, but here we are on this webinar. And so what I'm saying is that after you sign off this webinar, you might want to just Go ahead and sign on to the uh, to the annual report and take a look around. I'll give you instructions in a couple more slides right in here. It's important to remember also that um, you have to turn in an annual report, and you have to do so by uh, September 15th. Uh, there are no extensions to that. You can't. Uh, turned in, uh, you, you must turn in an a, a set of annual reports for three different distributions by that date. Now, don't get me wrong. You could still perhaps request an extension to the expenditure deadline for the 0607 distribution, for example. You can do that sometimes if you, you know, spend three years, but you still have another $100,000 that's not technically expended yet. Uh, you know, you're still putting the finishing touches on some of the uh, uh, maybe it's a rental project and you're still leasing up some of the units to eligible home buyers. You, you know, you might contact Florida Housing and say, we need an extension to our expenditure deadline. But that's different than asking for an extension for turning in annual reports. Every community has to turn in annual reports by September 15th. Even if you were requesting an extension, if you haven't expended all your 0607 dollars, you'll still turn in an annual report by September 15th that demonstrates that you haven't got all the money expended yet. And then later on, you'll turn in kind of a, a closeout annual report or the, the final thing where you're um, packing away and finishing up on that distribution. 
And uh, let's see, um, in addition to what you do electronically over the web, turning in your data, you will also be using our postal service uh, and mailing in some some printed things, some certification forms that need original signatures from your chief elected official. Uh, so I'm going to double check to see if we have been joined by anybody from Florida Housing. Still not yet. Let's keep on going then. What's the, well, what else is new? Uh, there's new things on form number four. Uh, form number four is the one that includes a whole lot of narrative information. Uh, it can be one of the uh, the, the longer forms to fill out of the entire annual report. Now, this is new. For the first time, Florida Housing is now requiring only data from the closeout distribution. That's the 0607 distribution this year. Um, only data from the closeout distribution uh, will be reported for form number four, or form number four will only be filled out for the 0607 report that you're doing. Uh, and that's, that's different than it's been in the past. There used to be some Form 4 questions that had to be answered for each and every one of the three distributions that you turned in. Uh, so that's, that's different. Now, there is one exception to that general rule. And, uh, look, I'm going to get out a little pointer. I have been mentioning this. Here's the exception to the rule. That is expended funds. Remember, there's a question on the, uh, the annual uh, report. Uh, tell us the names and the addresses of all the people that have uh, received expended money from you that you've fully assisted. Um, and that's, um, that's something that you're going to actually have to uh, answer for each and every um, one of your ship distributions. Uh, certainly, you will have expended all of your 0607 money, so there will be a long list of names of people who have money expended on them. But what I'm saying is that in addition to that, uh, you may have started expending some of your 0708 funds. So you would need to list the names of those that have already uh, received full assistance uh, through the 0708 dollars. All right, so I'm seeing that we have a couple more people that are signed on. And furthermore, I think I see that among those is some – give me just a second as I go ahead and uh, um, – Welcome our staff from Florida Housing onto this call. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, so, do we have staff from Florida Housing Finance Corporation with us now? Yes, we do. Michael, can you hear me? All right. Is that Leslie? Yes, it is. All right. Leslie Warren on the line. And are uh, you joined by any of your coworkers there? Darlene will be here in just a moment. All right. That's great. That's great. So uh, what I've done uh, for uh, Leslie and Darlene's line is to keep it unmuted. And uh, if you have anything over there uh, that the two of you all want to chime in or as we're getting questions or whatever, your phone line will always be unmuted for everybody else. Uh, you're on mute for right now just to uh, avoid any distracting side conversations or whatever. And now we're going full steam ahead. Um, so uh, expended funds is something that you'll have to report for each and every distribution. Now, consider that there's also a question about defaults and foreclosures um, on form number four. That question has been greatly streamlined, and that's a wonderful new thing on form four. It used to be that you had to provide cumulative data um, ever since the beginning of your SHIP program. So you'd have to, on one line of this question, you'd have to provide how, you know, how many very low-income home buyers have you ever assisted with SHIP money, how many moderate-income home buyers, all that sort of stuff. And then furthermore, you'd have to provide cumulative data in the, you know, within the life of your entire SHIP program, how many people have ever defaulted, how many people have ever lost their house to foreclosure. Now, none of that data of a cumulative nature is needed. It's a very cut and dry question. In the last 12 months, during the 08-09 state fiscal year, how many people defaulted on their first mortgage of their house? And how many, and it's not even actually how many people, it's not, not, not all of your SHIP recipients, it's only asking the question for those recipients who you've helped to buy homes, who've received your purchase assistance. A very specific question with a very streamlined and short answer for you to provide. 
And, uh, yeah, things have definitely changed with the definition of recaptured funds, as we're about to say in the next slide or so. Uh, but the final question on Form 4 has also changed. That's about program income and recaptured funds. As we move on to the – and I'm going to show you these things, too. So I'm just briefly giving you an overview of, of some things that especially have, uh, have changed. And so I want to encourage all of you to start typing some questions in, even as we're getting into this, especially, I think, about the next section. I think it, I'm going to try to be as clear as possible, but there's some big news that I'm about to share here. Uh, but go ahead and type in those questions. It's going to be a while before I unmute your phone lines. Uh, so uh, even in real time, I would like to get feedback on uh, from you. Hey, I know that guy. That is Governor Charlie Crist. And he is signing into law, just two weeks ago, signing into law Senate Bill 360. Now, I just want to briefly talk about this. It's relevant to our discussion of annual reports. Uh, SB 360 was the housing omnibus bill, which was uh, uh, added to uh, the growth management omnibus bill. Uh, and so uh, this is a handout that I sent to you. It's a PDF that's 80 pages long. And the first 40 pages of it are all about growth management. It's only the latter 40 pages that are especially relevant. And uh, among the affordable housing topics that are covered in that latter 40 pages uh, are some things dealing with SHIP. In fact, these two bullet points are among them. Uh, there's, a new, there's a change to recaptured funds, and there's a change that affects uh, the higher income folks that we can assist with SHIP money. Let's take each of those in turn. Recaptured funds now has a new definition. Uh, here is the definition, and to put it succinctly, recaptured funds are now only one thing, only funds not used for assistance. And so I want to be clear about this. Consider the situation that maybe some of you have been in where you were working with a for-profit developer or maybe some non-profit organization. They've come to you and they've said, we have a project. We want some ship money to fill in the blank, to buy some land, to start construction on some houses. We want some ship money for something, you know, that is an eligible activity. And so uh, your ship jurisdiction says, okay, here's uh, $100,000 go off and do that affordable housing project that we've agreed to and has been outlined in our contract with each other. Uh, but then they come back to you later and say, whoops, you know, uh, for one reason or another, the project has been canceled. We can't go forward. Maybe we didn't get other sources of subsidy that we were really counting on. But here is your $100,000 back. We are repaying money to the county or city ship program, uh, and the ship program is recouping money. Uh, that's an, a real important phrase, uh, phrase, recouping, and you'll see it. Um, I think you'll see that phrase somewhere in here, recouped. Um, so in that case right there, money was provided. Mo a check was cut and money went out of your local housing trust fund, but then ultimately was repaid because whatever project it was earmarked for didn't happen. The funds were never used to assist any eligible households. The deal is off. The money comes back to you, and you're going to use that money for some other uh, for some other purpose. Um, you know, back to the old drawing board. In a case like that, only in that type of case um, would you now consider that money recaptured funds. Which means, therefore that all other types of repayments that you might possibly get are now considered program income. So program income uh, is money when you're repaid because somebody's ship lien has been triggered. For example, three years ago we helped somebody buy a house. We put a ship lien on their house. Three years later, today, they sell their house. It triggers the ship lien. Hey, you weren't supposed to sell your house for 15 years or whatever the lien says, so pay us back our money. That money comes back to us not as recaptured funds. No, that's program income. Um, uh, bank interest will remain program income. If somebody loses their house to foreclosure in the very, very rare circumstance where ship program gets paid back a little something after that house uh, it has been in foreclosure. Uh, if we were to, you know, receive money because somebody's lost their house to foreclosure, that is program income also. So the vast majority of things that you could think of, that's all program income. This change applies to all of the annual reports that you're going to turn in. 
this September. So this September, it's very likely that the annual reports that we look at from one community or another community um, will say um, – We'll say that they, you know, they've received a big distribution, and then they have a big chunk of program income. They may not even list anything under recaptured funds. After all, this new definition of recaptured funds, funds not used for assistance, I mean, that's kind of, I think that's kind of a rare situation. Some communities may never find themselves in that situation. And so very likely you're going to have a lot of program income listed, not as much recaptured funds. This is very relevant, especially at this time, when we don't have any 0910 ship distribution coming to us. We don't have, therefore, any 0910 ship 10% admin budget coming to us. We need to figure out how to stretch our money as much as possible. And so, this is obvious to some of you who have been uh, tracking ship money in the past, what's the difference between recaptured funds and program income? Well, the main difference is you can spend 5 or 10% of your program income for additional admin expenses above and beyond your 10% admin budget, but no recaptured funds may be spent in that way. And so, uh, you know, <laughs> this might be our one silver lining of all that's been going on with our funding lately. At least now we can optimize the amount of money, the amount of repayments that we categorize as program income and it came at a perfect time when we're trying to figure out how to stretch our money. Uh, on this subject of uh, Senate Bill 360, we have a question somebody's typed in, and I'm going to encourage others to type in. I also noticed in uh, 360 that the, the housing definition now includes manufactured construction. Does that mean prefabs or trailers eligible? Uh, well, to define our terms, uh, what you call prefabs is probably something that always has been ship eligible. There are um, there are modular homes out there. I use that definition to talk about housing that is built to the Florida Building Code, but those homes are built in a factory and then they're driven down the highway uh, to the uh, to the site and placed on a foundation there. Uh, and and a prefab in that way has always been eligible for ship dollars because it has been built to the or the building code. You also use the term trailer, and, uh, you know, uh, trailer, mobile home, manufactured home. These terms refer to housing that is not built to the Florida Building Code. It's built to a national HUD standard uh, that has changed in the last 12 years or so. And uh, so that's the whole point. Senate Bill 360 also now says that eligible housing includes mobile homes, manufactured homes, whichever term you'd like to use. Uh, so that's the answer to that. I didn't bring up that part of 360 just because it's not so relevant to the annual report, but I sure appreciate that question. Okay, well, we got to keep on moving on and start talking about the annual report soon. Second part of Senate Bill 360 that I'll only briefly mention here is that now there's a change to who is eligible for assistance. Uh, and now we see that some higher income people will be eligible for assistance. Uh, Senate Bill 360 says you can now design a strategy, add a new strategy to your LHAP, and state that this strategy will be used to help people all the way up to 140% of the area median income. Well, this is a change because uh, up until now, we could only help people up to moderate income. And moderate income is a person whose income is at 80 to 120 percent of AMI. Now, don't get me wrong. The definition of moderate income has not changed. What I'm saying is there's now this new provision that you could create some special strategy and explicitly say, we're going to assist people even above moderate income, all the way up to the range of 140 percent of AMI. So moderate income, that's still the same definition as you've already had. Now you can have some special kind of strategy to help people even a little bit above that. Um, and so a question uh, has arisen back to this strategy. It's a very good question. Well, if this is now the new definition of recaptured funds, do we need to amend our LHAP to match the new recaptured definition? And the answer is certainly yes. There are some communities that have said something in their LHAP like, if you don't stay in this house for 10 years, you've got to pay us money back as recaptured funds. If you have any statement like that, if you have any statement that refers to recaptured funds as anything other than the new definition I've just provided, then surely you will want to change your LHAP because it doesn't make sense for the LHAP to have any contradiction to the ship statute. Good question, and let's keep 
those questions coming as I now move on to the, you know, the topic of the day, which is the, the web annual report. Now, I told you that the web uh, annual report is live. This is the address right here that will get you to the logon screen of the web annual report. Now, before I show you that, uh, let me just note that there's a password that you'll get. Right now, the default password is password exclamation point. You can change your password once you've logged on. Here's the rules. It has to be at least seven characters long. One of those characters, at least, has to be a non-alphanumeric character, uh, like this asterisk symbol that we have here, or the much understated ampersand sign. Uh, so, uh, use whatever you want to. We've used an exclamation point in this case. And, um, uh, so, let me actually show you what we're talking about. This is the part of the presentation where I'm going to start to, you know, veer off of the PowerPoint. We won't look at that too much anymore. And you're going to actually see, um, yes, this is what I want to share right here. You're going to see the first screen that I want you to share, uh, to see. Uh, now, uh, just, just, uh, I won't do this too much to y'all, but Leslie and Darlene, y'all are the only folks who are unmuted right now. Can I ask you, can you see the login screen? Yes. Okay, great. Um, so that means everybody can. Okay, well, I've already logged in, but I just wanted to point out that this is the login screen. You type in your email address. You type in your password. Now, when I say your email address, uh, that may cause some confusion. I've told people uh, on the previous webinars, which had the same content, I've told them, yeah, type in your email. Well, there's only one email for each jurisdiction that is the email to log in. I had one person who traditionally does the annual reports for her community ask me, I tried my email and it didn't work. Well, it turns out it's like her supervisor or whatever. So think about who usually receives the emails whenever Florida Housing emails to you. Um, and uh, if your email doesn't work, then just keep on trying the other main people. Type in their email address, uh, type in password, exclamation point, and you should be able to log on. Uh, but uh, if in, in, the, in the future you have any difficulties, not this first time, but if in the future you do, you can click right here. Click here for login help. This will generate a new password and email it to the one email that is on file for each ship jurisdiction. Uh, um, and so, yeah, so that's how you would do that. And yet, like I said, I've already done that. Uh, so uh, I've already logged on. So let me uh, briefly come back to the PowerPoint and then off to the annual report. Uh, my web has been going kind of slow today, so hopefully that won't catch us in a, in a bind with the uh, things I want to show you on this annual report. Um, and so here's the, uh, here it is right here. And uh, I'm almost wondering if I, you know what, I'm going to log out and log back in just to make sure it hasn't cut me off. Eventually, you can stay logged on to this annual report for up to four hours and uh, without typing any new information, and you won't be logged out. But I think they have a much shorter time frame for that right now. So, boy, look at how slowly my uh, internet is going right here. <coughs> okay. So, here, I'll log in very quickly. Now, the format of the uh, of the annual report hasn't changed all that much. For, for those of you who have in the past uh, been creating annual reports, you'll remember that up until now, we've used an Excel spreadsheet version of the annual report. And um, so this is exactly where I want to be right now. Um, but now you'll see that the format is still kind of similar. There's a lot of built-in formulas and such uh, that, that are even more than what we're used to seeing on the Excel spreadsheet. And it, uh, so now the web annual report kind of assesses, as you're entering data, it is assessing whether or not that's the correct data that it's expecting to see. But I don't want to get ahead of myself. I'll show you that in just a second. But right now, I just want to introduce you to a couple of things on this page of the annual report. Um, form number one. Well, right even before we start looking at the questions from form number one, it might be helpful to ask the question, how do I, how do I print out an annual report? As I'm working on this, I might want to share it with one of my coworkers. Well, uh, the first thing to know is soon enough I'll be sending you a blank PDF 
uh, a copy, a, a PDF that is a blank version of the annual report. Each form uh, is a blank. And that was a little bit harder to do than you might think, because look at this. The, it, no one form on the annual report can entirely be seen without scrolling down. Uh, but I was able to create a, uh, a PDF. We'll get that sent out to you. Uh, so that will help on the front end. Maybe you might want to take that blank form and, and you know, write in your your data and then log on to this annual report and type it in. Certainly there's no requirement to do that, but you might want to. Uh, but what if you've started to create an annual report? It's only partially completed, but you still want to uh, share a copy of it with people. Well, you can print out each page of this annual report by your browser print option. You just come down here to File and Print and, uh, you know, do your thing. Uh, so you can print out each page in that fashion. But the biggest question is, okay, now I've finally created my, my complete annual reports. All three of them are done. I've turned it into Florida Housing, but I need to have a copy of it. After all, it is a requirement that I uh, provide my annual reports for public review uh, that I presented to my county or city commission. Uh, my chief elected official is going to want to look at a copy of that annual report before he or she signs the certification form that says say that it's all uh, accurate. And so um, once you've turned in and submitted your annual report, this system will provide an option uh, for you to send you an electronic version of what you have provided. It will very likely be um, a spreadsheet. And uh, um, this week, the, you know, Florida Housing is working on that option. Nobody's turning in their annual reports just yet. So that portion of the, uh, of the system is being added this week. And so that's great. Right. It's, it's, it's something that you're going to need to have in order to do what is required of you with these annual reports. And uh, so one more thing before we get started. Look at a couple of these things that we have on this annual report, like click here for support contact information. When we click here, and in many places, a pop-up box appears. And in this pop-up box, we have uh, contact information for, well, here I am, along with some of my coworkers at the Florida Housing Coalition. You know, we regularly provide technical assistance to you. Uh, here's our toll-free number right there. And, uh, and, and farther down, you have contacts of uh, Terry Oranger, Darlene Raker, over at Florida Housing, um, in case you need to, to ask them any type of question. In between here, by the way, is an option for you to click here in order to download a blank copy of the SHIP tracking spreadsheet. That is, the spreadsheet that several SHIP jurisdictions use throughout the year to slowly but surely track expenditures, encumbrances, demographic information, and all the data that will ultimately be needed to create an annual report. Uh, this is not a standard SHIP form. You can create your own tracking spreadsheet if you want to, but the fact remains that Statutorily, you are required to have some type of tracking system in your SHIP office. You can't just rely on the finance department. There has to be some tracking spreadsheet in your office. Uh, I also want to point out that right here at the top, we have a pull-down menu that allows us to select either an 0607, an 0708, or an 0809 annual report. Now, naturally, we want to start with the, the oldest distribution and create that report first. Um, and then one final thing that I want to point out to you, look at these question marks. Right on the screen we're looking at, there are two question marks. Let me go to the upper left-hand corner first. I click on that, and another pop-up box uh, appears. Uh, this pop-up box has general information about the annual report, some general instructions, not specific to any one form or whatever, but just as you're getting started. And uh, that's helpful. A little bit farther down, right on form number one, we have another question mark, and another pop-up box appears. Now, this pop-up box deals with uh, instructions, again, but this time instructions that are only relevant for form number one. And uh, oh, that's, that's very helpful. And, and there's even more things. Throughout this annual report, you're going to see little question marks scattered throughout. Here's one at the bottom of form number one. And when I click on that, I see some very specific instructions that are relevant just to this section of the form uh, dealing with revenue. Uh, in fact, it even gets better than that. There's 
instructions like you're used to seeing uh, from previous annual reports. But then look at this. Click here to learn about how shift jurisdictions distinguish between program income and recapture funds. So there's even another pop-up box. Just actually, admittedly, I have to change this information in here since the definition of recaptured funds has just changed. But look at, so this is an example. Frequently asked questions are scattered throughout this annual report, and you can read about relevant things as you are trying to change the data uh, that is, uh, or, or add your data in the relevant boxes here. Okay. So now that I've shown you just a couple of general things about this uh, annual report, let me get started with introducing you to a couple of items specific to form number one. Well, this doesn't look so much like the format of the top of form one that we're used to seeing. We're used to seeing several columns. You can list your strategy and all that sort of stuff. Well, here we go. Let's go ahead and do that. We can create a strategy by clicking right here on this small icon, which is uh, like a, a little image of a piece of paper with a folded down corner. And... Um, once we click on that, we're telling the annual report, we would like to add uh, a new strategy. Uh, I'm clicking on the section for home ownership, so I'm saying that I'd like to add a home ownership strategy uh, specifically. And uh, once my slow Internet connection, <laughs> it's not supposed to be so slow, but it's acting up today. But once it, uh, it pops up here, um, it's going to give me a line where I think I'll type in the strategy rehabilitation, and I'll enter in some data. Um, to show that I've expended some money uh, for for rehabilitation. Okay. Here we go. And uh, even before I start typing, it looks like I can start typing in here, but no, i got to go over here to this icon for a pencil in order to start, you know, writing information or rather editing the information that's in these boxes. So I click on this pencil here and... Uh, as that's going on, let me tell you that this data that I'm about to enter right now is solely for expenses and encumbrances associated with strategies. There's boxes down below it that I'll show you in just a minute that are relevant to um, things like admin budget expenses. Okay, so the first thing that I'll do is I will add a code for the type of strategy uh, that I have. Uh, what if you didn't know the code for a rehab strategy? Well, you just click on the word code, and a pop-up box appears with all of the codes. I already knew that, so I just typed three. Uh, rehabilitation. I type that in. And, uh, you know, let's say I spent $550,000 on 12 units, no, maybe 15 units of housing. I press this little icon here. That's the save button. Looks like a little disk, uh, the save or the update button. And now, as soon as I'm saving this information, the data really does stay up at Florida Housing's computer. And so, as you're, you know, as you're creating these annual reports, uh, that's a little bit different than what we've done in the past. The information is actually getting stored over at Florida Housing as you're creating them. Uh, let's say that our, you know, just type down a little bit here under our admin budget. Let's say we've spent. Uh, $25,000. Maybe we spend a little bit of money also on home ownership counseling. I'll go ahead to this box right up here and I'll save those changes. You can see that it, it takes a moment for it to um, register that you want to save information. Um, and uh, normally it's not nearly this delayed. I think this is a function of what's going on uh, for whatever reason on my side of using the, the web right now. Uh, so I'll hurry on and tell you as this is uh, uh, updating here. But the next section of what we're going to do is about uh, about revenue. We've been typing in expenditures here, uh, but the next thing will be uh, uh, revenue. And uh, But before I get there, let me just remind you of something that you probably already know. You turn in three annual reports this year for three different distributions. Now, each of those distributions is at a different State. I've been talking a lot about the 0607 um, uh, distribution because that 0607 money must be fully closed out, fully expended this year. Therefore, the annual report for 0607, which is the one I'm making right now, will show information under the expended amount, but it should not show any encumbered amounts of money, nor should it show any unencumbered amounts of money. 
your closeout reports should only have data in the expended column. We come down to revenue. Let's say I have uh, some other sources of revenue, uh, including, um, oh, let's say $50,000 of bank interest and another $50,000 of, uh, of payments, you know, like repayments. Uh, and I'll save those changes as well. By the way, while this is saving, did you notice that right under Ship Annual Report, we have the name of the jurisdiction, which is Cheneyville. And if you haven't lately checked your Florida map, no, I'm just kidding, um, the, this jurisdiction is a fake jurisdiction. Uh, thankfully, Nathan Sinclair, the person that I've been working with, you know, from Florida Housing, who's done a majority of the programming on uh, the web annual report, he was able to add a couple of fictitious jurisdictions here. So I can show you, I can actually type this data into the annual report, but I'm not messing up any real jurisdictions information. Cheneyville, I called it. Um, and you'll notice that very generously, Florida Housing gave Cheneyville a half a million dollars in a state annual distribution. I wish. Uh, there's also program income. So we have a revenue uh, when we look at the distribution plus the bank interest, plus the repayments, plus carryover. That's another source of revenue. We have over $600,000 of revenue. And I want to then point out something right here that's interesting. Look at this data. The web annual report will automatically uh, generate a carry-forward amount of money for your closeout distribution. Remember, we only use a carry-forward. That's the only relevant time for talking about carry-forward is when you've fully expended all of your ship money during a closeout uh, period of time. Um, it's only at this point that you've run out of time to expend your money, and the amount of carry-forward money, like this example right here, is too small to assist the next um, ship applicant uh, or you know, to fully assist them. So that's when we carry it forward. In order for this web annual report to automatically do its job of calculating the carry forward money, that means that you have to avoid adding any information in the unencumbered column right here. Now, technically, this $5,100 right here, this carry forward, technically that money is unencumbered money. But don't add it into the unencumbered amount. Uh, column right here, and in that way, the annual report will know to automatically calculate your carry forward. Okay, now we're moving off to, yep, to form number two. And even before, just so you know, I'm going to uh, open up the floor for questions um, after finishing uh, showing you uh, form number two and the review tab. Uh, so as we're uh, looking at form number two, I'm going to take us briefly uh, back to the PowerPoint. I wanted to check to make sure that there weren't any additional questions. There are some additional questions here. Um, okay, uh, let's go back to talking about recapture. One question about recapture. Any new, any new legislative bill only pertains to the most recent uh, fiscal year or 08 or 09. Um, okay, uh, to answer your question, Joe, uh, what I told you about recaptured funds, the definition for recaptured funds, we checked in yesterday with the legal counsel of Florida Housing Finance Corporation, and they confirm uh, that this definition of this new definition of recaptured funds applies to all three of the distributions for which you are turning in annual reports this September. Now, one might argue, well, if that's the case, it would have been great to know about the new definition of recaptured funds for 0607. So some of that money could have been spent on a couple of additional admin expenses. It's true. Uh, that would have been great to know. But still, this new definition of recaptured is very relevant to 0708 and 0809. Optimize the amount of money that you can count towards program income, and you will therefore optimize the amount of uh, admin expenses that may be paid for with program income. Um, so now back to the application to the, the annual report, the web page that we were just looking at. Everything's going slow for me here. Okay, share. Great. Here we are on form number two. And even before we get started looking at the details of form number two, well, first of all, I want to point out something that I just now did. I clicked a little icon in front of recap of funding sources. It's a little plus sign. And I want to point out that on form two, all the questions are kind of 
tucked away so they won't try to get in your way. Uh, and this is going to be a real hassle to show you this annual report with all these things tucked away and with each click of the button taking about a half a minute to, uh, to show a new screen. Uh, but I think I'm going to have to do that. So as I'm talking, let me point this out uh, to you. Okay, here's another something that I'm about to show to you, uh, which is that um, your um, annual report is created uh, by all the data that you have collected from uh, your ship tracking spreadsheet. So this might be as good a time as any for me to show you that, that tracking spreadsheet uh, in action, just uh, very briefly to uh, to show you that this is where we get our data from. Oh, brother, it's taking a long time. Um, let me go ahead and show that to you. All right. And so here is the um, the tracking spreadsheet that I wanted to show you. Uh, this is one for a community that's got, like, look at this, a whole bunch of strategies and a whole lot of money encumbered for each of these strategies. But some of you all are familiar with looking at this summary page, and here's where you add all your sources of revenue. And on form number one and the other forms, but here mainly you'll type in the name of each new recipient and how much money is encumbered for them. And eventually, as you start to expend the money, here's where all that goes. But this is a very important uh, document that we're looking at here. After all, this is the document that um, that you work with. It's kind of an internal document, and you work with it throughout the year uh, to um, to collect information slowly but surely on those that you are assisting. You'll then use this internal document to get the data to create your annual report. And here's one example. Uh, we're on form number two. And that form asks questions about set-asides. Well, look at this whole section of the uh, of the tracking spreadsheet. It is a summary of your compliance with the set-aside. I'm happy to say that in all cases, this community that we're looking at has uh, has uh, met or exceeded, actually exceeded in all cases, the three um, set-asides, the amount of money that has to be dedicated to each one of them. And so uh, that's great. You know, uh, you would use that to answer a question that we're about to answer on the annual report. Okay. So let's see here. Now we'll go back to the annual report. And uh, um, so I've already typed in some data here just to save us uh, some time. Um, and which things do I want to tell you about? On this on this page, let's keep on talking about those set-asides. Look, here's some information that I've created for uh, the um, the home ownership and the construction rehab set-asides. You know, even as we're looking at that, I'm going to actually save a change. Instead of $550,000 for the amount of money that has been expended or encumbered for the home ownership set-aside, I'm going to accidentally add an additional zero. That is to say, now the report shows that $5.5 million has been spent in compliance with that. Well, that's clearly an error, but you're going to see why I did that error in just a minute. Uh, so, yeah, so this is where you would add this in here. You know, while we're looking at these questions about set-asides, let me just remind you, and this is uh, the section right here that best demonstrates this, take a look at how this income set-aside has a column for expended money, one for encumbered, one for unencumbered. Because the truth is, in the case of all three set-asides, you must count the amount of expended money that has been spent, for example, in compliance with the home ownership set-aside, but also any encumbered money that will soon be spent in compliance with that set-aside. The same thing for unencumbered. Uh, money that we haven't gotten around to committing to anybody yet, but once we do, we're going to spend it in compliance with the home ownership set-aside. That's an important something that I think that some people uh, forget at times. And um, so down here, I'm not going to waste time by opening up these two questions, but you have a couple more questions uh, on, on the bottom that you would open up and you'd fill in all the details there. Um, we're halfway through the annual report right now, and this is a perfect time to show you what's on this tab right here, a tab that's called Review. 
Uh, I want to briefly show this to you, and then I'm going to open up. I'm going to unmute the phones so that we can, uh, you know, just uh, if you have any questions about what we've covered so far, uh, we can get into that. This review tab is something new, surely. We've never seen this before. And this gets back to what I was telling you when we first started looking at the annual report. This report has validation formulas that are built into it. That's a fancy way of saying little programs that analyze the data that you're entering into the annual report to determine if it seems to be accurate or if there seems to be something off on it. And here's an example. If a validation formula senses something is wrong, it will create an error message just like this one. On form number two, in the question about the home ownership set aside, the home ownership amount of money that you uh, provided is a value that is greater than the amount of revenue and the amount of expenses on Form 1. You must have a problem. Well, yeah, I had intentionally put that problem in there so that we could then go ahead and repair it. It's a very easy repair. We just delete one of the, uh, I guess really one of the zeros here. Save changes. And so this example that I'm giving is, is helpful for you to just see what I mean when I talk about validation errors and all that stuff. And uh, when we see the review tab again here, we'll notice that, uh, oh, you know, everything, um, everything is okay with this, uh, um, with this annual report. Go on and create your interim two annual report now. The goal will be, once you've created all three of your annual reports, to look at the review tab for each one of the annual reports and to see if there are any error messages. Once you have no more error messages, uh, a little button will appear below here. You'll be able to click it and submit, officially submit your annual reports. But we're not there yet because we, uh, look, we, we, we've only been working on the 0607 annual report. We have the interim one and the interim two reports that we still have left to do. Okay? So now I'm going to, uh, I see that we've gotten some good typed in questions here. And a perfect time to unmute all the phone lines. Yes, you're unmuted now. What, what kind of questions do we have? Hey, Michael. It's Joe again. Hey, there. Quick, quick question, Michael. Um, when we got this entered, and I think you mentioned it, but I didn't catch it. Yeah. How do you, can you, if you want to print out a copy, how do you do that then? Okay. In the in the interim, when you haven't yet finished all your reports, you can simply go up to now. I'm not on a um, a um, uh, web page right now, so I can't show you. But you would go up to the to the pull down menus of your web browser, and you would uh, you would just click print, and it will print that page along with all the data that you've got. So in the interim, before you've actually officially submitted everything, you can only get a paper copy. Okay, but once you actually have turned in three corrected annual reports that don't have any validation errors on them, you'll be able to click that submit button. Once you do that, there will be an option for you to request a uh, electronic version of the annual report, and, and you're going to need to have that. You're going to want to share it with your lenders, your rehab contractors, and you do have the requirement to share that with the public in general. Right, because we've got to take it to them, you know. That's and right. To advertise it and also then take it when we take the certification then to the commissioners. Yep, yep. We need a copy of it too then. Yeah. Yeah. Good question. What other questions do we have? Hi, Gold. This is Sergio from the City of Miami. Can you hear me? Yeah, sure can. Okay. Uh, in reference to the recapture, you know, as you mentioned, some of us in our documents do have that verbiage that if you don't meet the affordability period, it's considered recaptured. Uh -huh. For those prior years, going forward, I guess we'll change it. For those prior years, yeah. uh -huh. is there something that needs to be done, or do we just basically mentally make a note of it? Well, um, you know, you might want to consult with your, uh, your legal counsel for your city or county, but it seems to me it might be a good idea to um, – so, first of all, let's recognize that some ship liens don't have that verbiage that says you must pay back money as recaptured funds. And if you don't have that, then there's really no problem there. Uh, but if you did have something like that in your lien, then it might be a good idea to change, again, to change your L half and say, our old liens used to say this, but now we know that as of 2009, 
definition of recaptured funds has changed, and we will now interpret any payback money from a lien that has been triggered that will now be counted as program income. Okay. Good question. Um, I have a question on uh, logging in. I tried for about two hours yesterday and used the passwords they sent me, made up passwords, did all kinds of things, and still uh -huh. not able to get into it. All right. And uh, you, you were responding, uh, you did that in response to an email that Florida Housing sent to you, and it told you what email address to use and what password to use. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. Well, I put in my, uh, my email address. Uh -huh. Something. Um, uh, which community are you with? Charlotte County. It's Bob Hebert from Charlotte. Okay, hey Bob. Um, okay, and in fact, I do see that the email address is Robert Hebert at CharlotteFL.com. That is the uh, email address that is um, uh, supposed to be on uh, file with Florida Housing. That's the email address you use. Yes. Oh well, Bob, I'm sorry for that uh, that uh, that glitch there. Um, and at this point, the way to handle that is to, to email. Uh, Terry Oranger um, at Terry dot Oranger at FL Housing dot uh, Florida Housing dot org and uh, let her know about this. Now, what I want to let you know for the other people that are on the, the call and you're like, are we going to have, have the same problem? Uh, there have been ship administrators that have been logging in for several days now. There has been a handful, a small handful, that have been di having difficulties. And so it surely is a hassle for them, but uh, Florida Housing is addressing their issues as they come along. Bob, if you'd like to copy me on your email, that will also remind me to take this up with uh, Florida Housing staff, uh, since I'm also, you know, fielding questions on all this sort of thing, and let's hope that we can get you all signed on right away. Okay, well, I did email Terry and someone else, so it's in process, I think. I oh, it's in process. Okay, good to know. Thank you. What else? Any other questions for right now? Uh, I got one more. Yeah. For reference to recapture again, you mentioned that recapture, you used an example of a construction loan. Um, obviously, a rehabilitation loan where it's completed, the person pays back, there's no longer going to be recaptured, it's going to be considered program income. Yeah. Home homebuyers. Any other example you could mention that would fall into that criteria? Because it sounds like there's only one way they could, that it could be um, recaptured funds. Yeah, well, you know, um, you, you mentioned that I had mentioned a construction loan, and I don't know if I use that term, but you're absolutely right that when we provide some upfront money to, like, say, a for-profit developer, they're going to build an apartment or something like that, uh, that would be, you know, construction loan. Uh, also, another example of that might be, getting back to the example I gave with you give some money to a non-profit organization, that might very well be... Um, that might be uh, you give $100,000 because they are going to do rehab on 20 house households uh, over the next 12 months. That's the agreement. You've got a contract that states that, and you've just, for whatever reason, given them that money up front. A lot of communities don't do that, but let's say in this example that you do. Now, this nonprofit all of a sudden loses its two rehab people, and uh, it's in, you know, dire financial problems. It's about to go under, <laughs> and for whatever reason, they cannot do that rehab work. Well, that money, you already cut them a check for $100,000. They have to repay that money. The county or city recoups that money, and they categorize that as recaptured funds. But uh, I, I kind of um, struggle past a certain point to come up with other examples because this is a fairly unusual or rare circumstance that a ship jurisdiction may find itself in. It's not the normal order of business, and uh, very likely a community maybe will not have that much recaptured funds going forward. Oh, uh, here's another question uh, that I'll go ahead and um, uh, just read. I have a question regarding assisting manufactured housing. You mentioned some manufactured housing receives a DCA certificate, while other manufactured housing receives federal certification. Okay, so let's get on the same page with our terms. 
There are no manufactured housing units in Florida that receive a DCA certificate. Instead, you're thinking of modular housing or housing that is built to the Florida Building Code. And yes, indeed, for those types of homes, you will see a gold or silver DCA certification. Maybe it's in the electrical panel. Maybe it's under the kitchen sink. Um, but no manufactured housing will have that seal. Instead, manufactured housing is what we also call mobile homes, and that's built to uh, a HUD standard. And so for the first time ever, manufactured housing is now called eligible ship housing, uh, ship, eligible for ship assistance to buy or to repair, I suppose. Um, uh, but modular housing, the type that's always gotten the DCA sticker, that always has been eligible for uh, ship assistance. Uh, good. Okay, those are good questions. Uh, in, the, for, in the interest of time, we've got about another half an hour. I'm going to go ahead and mute all the phone lines and uh, show you the second half of the annual report. Here we go back to the annual report. Good questions that y'all are asking. Let's see, which one do I want to go to here? Okay. So uh, now let's take a look at form number three. Uh, form number three has everything to do with demographic information. And uh, as we're slowly but surely making our way to that form, uh, I want to point out that sometimes I notice when I'm um, alternating between one form and another form, uh, sometimes I get stuck or I get an error message um, um, or, or the form won't automatically update. Uh, well, it's as easy as either clicking the refresh option on your browser right here in the pull-down menu, or um, if that doesn't work, uh, clicking log out right out here, and then logging back in. Shouldn't be all that much hassle. And, and I've only noticed that in very rare uh, circumstances. It doesn't happen all that often. Uh, demographic information, let's remember that this information is only relevant to um, households that have received expended money or uh, that have fully received the assistance that they're going to get. But you'll see that there's these uh, options here for you to type in uh, a strategy, like the rehab strategy that I showed you on form number one, and type in how much, uh, you know, who was assisted. You know, oh, these were all very low-income people, and look, you know, the, the age distribution of these people. So I've already typed all this information in, but you can kind of see um, how that works here. Um, you'll also notice that I've typed this information, oh boy, I've typed in this information, this line of information up here, but then this line right here is something that the web annual report automatically shows me. It is the information that I have previously provided on form number two. The very last question asks questions about your expended funds, your households that have received expended funds. And so this is another way to cross-check to make sure you're providing the proper information. Okay? Now we're on to Form 4. Plenty of things to talk about on Form 4. And uh, the first thing I want to point out is you may remember that, and look here again, all of these questions are tucked away. So uh, you may remember that the first strategy on here is about your incentive strategies. At a minimum, each ship jurisdiction has two incentive strategies, at least expedited permitting and ongoing review. And in fact, you can see that I've typed those two into this form right here. So one minor thing that I want to point out here is that there is not a separate box provided for each strategy. You simply need to number and list your strategies here and then answer the following questions about the implementation schedule, uh, is, is each strategy now implemented, what's the status of the strategy, as in is it functioning properly, and, uh, you know, you can see that my answers here are very brief, but just go ahead and type kind of in narrative form the information that's uh, requested for these strategies. Um, let's see, what's the next one? Well, default and foreclosure is a question that we need to talk some about. You'll notice that I'm certainly not addressing every question on each form of this annual report. The purpose of our webinar today is not so much to provide just a, uh, a general introduction for somebody who's never done an 
annual report before, but rather to highlight some things that are that are new. Even if you're familiar with the annual report, you need to know about this stuff. Take a look at this question, default and foreclosure. This is where you answer the question, okay, during the 08-09 state fiscal year, how many very low-income households uh, are in foreclosure? Uh, and then, you know, low income and then moderate income. So you're answering that question only for that 12-month period of time. And so um, I want to point out also that this is only for home buyers that you've assisted, and this is only for information about the first mortgage on each of these household houses. Uh, that is to say, we're not talking about foreclosure or default on a ship lien, on a ship mortgage. No, we're talking about the first mortgage that a person has on their house, the house that we help them buy. Um, and so, yeah, so uh, answer that, those questions, which should be a lot easier to answer these days. All right? Um, and now, as I pull up this form right here, I want to... Um, Great. I want to get the right Excel spreadsheet that I'm going to be using. So, here we are. Okay, so expended funds. Boy, this is a big one. Now, um, I, I had forgotten to delete this information from the last webinar that I've done. So this gives me an excellent opportunity to point out, what if I wanted to delete this information? Look, there's a button right over here, delete all rows. And when I do that, um, it's going to you know, give me ultimately a, a blank slate on which I can now type in some information. But you know what? I have information on 15 households that I need to share on this page. And I don't want to have to click this button and write in each new row of information. Uh, luckily, though, I don't have to. I can click this Import button, and I can import this data from an Excel spreadsheet. And I suspect that that's the way that a lot of uh, communities will do it, too. So let me show you that Excel spreadsheet that I'm speaking of. Uh, it's right over here. Now, this, um, just so you know, what we're looking at right here is actually an, an old annual report form. You may remember tab number eight. This is where you'd enter in this data. I mean, I thought it would be real helpful because, look, I mean, it's, it's already set up. Strategy, full name, address, all that stuff. And I typed my data at, you know, right down here. Here is the title of each of the strategy where each of these people was assisted. And there are 15 rows of information. I select all the data. I do control C for, you know, to copy uh, that. And now I come back to the annual report, uh, where I We'll enter that data. Uh, so, share. Uh -huh. uh, so you'll notice that when I clicked uh, that little Excel uh, icon earlier, uh, now this appears. There's a little window. I'm going to click in the window, and then I'm going to do Control-Z, or I'm going to paste into that window. And I'm going to push this button, Import Data Now. And uh, it's that simple. You know, it didn't take all that long before, ta-da, here's the, here's the data. And this data matches the data that I've provided on Form 1, because it was on Form 1 that I indicated that I had spent $550,000 to assist 15 units. Okay, continuing to move on here. I'm not showing you everything about this, but uh, uh -huh, here's an important something. Look at this final question here. about pro This would be, this final question is about the sources of revenue that constitute program income. It used to be the sources of revenue for program income or recapture funds, but we already know what your recaptured funds are. They now are only one type of thing, funds not used for assistance. And so now this, this table is very much simplified. Simplified in two ways. First of all, now it only provides information about program income. Simplified in another way. It used to be last year, in the last couple of years, uh, you had to provide data on the income category of the households who repaid money back to you. And uh, so you, you don't have to do that anymore. So that's a, this is a very simplified question that you've, that you've got right here. Okay, so, um, so now I've, I've, I've shown you the, the latter half of this Form 4. And do you remember how, you know, in cooking programs of old and even still today, uh, you know, they'll show you how to make a recipe, you know, add all the ingredients in. But at some point, towards the end of the program, they walk over to the oven, 
and they open it up, and there it is. There's the final dish. It's already cooked. Um, and in a similar way, I want to show you that I have um, that I've created um, not only Janieville, one snake jurisdiction, but I've also created another jurisdiction called FHC by the Sea, Florida Housing Coalition, FHC by the Sea. And so now let's take a look at this annual report, because indeed this annual report has actually um, been – Let's go back to the beginning. It's actually been all filled out here, you know. And so I filled out the 0607 annual report. I also want to go down here and show you that I've figured, uh, fixed up the 0809 annual report, too. I've, I've completed all of them. And so now when I click on the Review tab, it's actually the Review and Submit tab. And um, I have, oh, gosh, uh, in Form 2. The unencumbered value is not equal to the uh -huh. I knew that I was going to have this problem. I come up here to the Form 1, $530,000 is unencumbered. And let me just go ahead and correct this. Let me get 530, 500, yeah, I do need to change that. $530,000, I'll press Save Changes. So you see what I'm doing here again. There was a validation error. Hey, something's not right on your annual report. I've gone ahead and fixed up that mistake. And now, <laughs> okay, there's form three. Uh, there's a small uh, uh, misunderstanding. Sometimes the um, this report, even though I have actually expended no money on um, this 0809 distribution, I might just have to click a zero again in order to remind this form and kind of get past that little error message. Okay, well, apparently I'm not able to get past that error message, at least not in real time while we're talking right here. I'll have to go and figure out what the, the mistake is right here. If I had corrected this mistake, there would have been no mistakes on the annual reports anymore. And this button right down here at the bottom, submit this report to FHC, uh, would would become a button that I could actually click and I could submit these uh, reports. And so just for the interest of uh, remaining uh, on time with our training, I'm not going to bother to try to figure out what exactly is the mistake that I need to correct on form number three, but you get the idea. And um, so that's, that's enough about review. I want to come back to this, uh, uh, this PowerPoint, and uh, even though I'm not going to really refer to it, you know, farther along in the PowerPoint, you have this screen right here, uh, Review and Submit and Certification Forms. Let's talk about the certification forms for a second. One of them is very straightforward. It is only the certification saying, yes, all of this information is correct, and this is a form that your um, chief elected official would sign. Uh, but then look at this certification. It's the other one. This is the Regulatory Reform Certification. And I just want to point out that on this form, item number one says, yes, we have expedited permitting. And items two through four say, yes, we have another incentive strategy called ongoing review, ongoing process for review of local policies and such uh, that increase the cost of housing. And so um, on questions three and four, this is where your jurisdiction has to provide some detailed uh, um, estimate of, okay, in the last 12 months, during the state fiscal year 08-09, um, what additional ordinances or fees uh, or whatever were considered or were actually adopted, uh, what were those things, and uh, how much did we estimate that they would increase the cost of, for question number three, the cost of new construction, and for question number four, the cost of rehabilitating housing. And uh, so that's what you've got to do. Now, you know, there's nothing in the SHIP rule or statute or anywhere that actually gives you very detailed guidance on how you should make this estimate. That's up to you locally. You might want to keep a little documentation to be able to later prove that you indeed made a responsible estimate for um, answering this document right here. But this signed document, then, this certification form becomes Florida housing, one of Florida Housing's ways of confirming that your community really has implemented 
at the very least, the required incentive strategies that every jurisdiction is, is required to have. And so um, you can follow up with the coalition if uh, you have any other questions on that topic. But it's important enough that I wanted to um, that I wanted to point that out to you right here. And so uh, you know, I, this is very good. We're we're doing good on time here, also. And uh, I actually have time to go on before we open up the the phones for questions. It'll be our last time to ask questions. I want to polish off these last couple of PowerPoint slides, like by encouraging you to start your reporting process early. Um, after all, this year, uh, you're going to have to uh, become familiar with a system that, that right now you're not all that familiar with. And, and furthermore, um, unlike in the past, uh, you cannot turn in your annual reports until all of the little errors have been corrected in it. Now, let's contrast this to how you did it last year. With those Excel spreadsheets, you fill in your annual reports. Let's admit that a jurisdiction could just fill in just a whole bunch of fictitious numbers into an annual report, turn it into Florida Housing. And it's only once it's received at Florida Housing that Terry Erringer would look at it and say, oh, you know, that this is not right. They did their math wrong or, or you know, this doesn't make any sense. And they'll hand it back to you. Hey, you got to address, you know, question number two on – Form three, uh, your answer doesn't make sense, you know. Uh, so you used to, you know, it used to be the case that almost every ship jurisdiction had one or more annual reports sent back to them. You know, that was a very common occurrence. Well, these days there's not any sending back. Rather, on the front end, if you don't get the questions right, if there's still something just like intrinsically erroneous about the data that you've provided, then the system won't let you turn in the annual reports. But I mentioned to you that all reports are due on September 15th, and there's no possibility of an extension. And so it behooves you to create your annual reports earlier. You have over two and a half months, as of right now, barely over two and a half months, to get these reports turned in. Consider maybe right now you've already expended all of your 06, 07 money. If it's fully expended, you know, you could create your 0607 closeout report right now. I mean, at the very least, you could assemble the data this week. But you could go on the, the web right now, log into your annual report, and you could start typing in that data. And then, you know, later on, uh, say in July or August, you can assemble the same information, you know, for 0708 and for 0809 dollars, create those annual reports, and, and you'll be ready to submit them to to Florida Housing. And so I just really encourage you to, to get started soon with uh, going around the that web annual report. You can log into it as of today. Now, here's the first step, and I think this is very important to uh, uh, for everyone to recognize. Even before creating your annual reports, it might be helpful to check to make sure that the tracking spreadsheets actually have the same data on them uh, that will reflect your local housing trust fund. Or uh, put another way, your general ledger, you know, which has information about your ship revenue and expenses, your general ledger and your tracking spreadsheet should reconcile with each other. This is a requirement of, uh, of, of, of the ship program. It's actually a requirement of uh, the state's single audit act. Uh, each of our jurisdictions receives uh, enough money that the SHIP program is one of the things that auditors will look at specifically when they come in and audit your local city or county. And uh, so the bottom line is the SHIP, uh, uh, is that the State Single Audit Act says, hey, your SHIP annual report must be an accurate reflection of your general ledger. Now, the reason I, I put so much emphasis on this is when you create your annual report, you don't refer back to the general ledger to get your data to create the annual report. Instead, you refer to your tracking spreadsheets. That's what I told you from the beginning of this training. And so it really behooves you to make sure that your tracking spreadsheets are correct. So here, do this little exercise. First, look at your spreadsheet. Look at 0607, you'll have a separate spreadsheet for 0708 and a separate spreadsheet for 0809. Look at each one of those uh, uh, spreadsheets. Identify, first of all, 
all of the unencumbered money, okay, and add that all up. Just kind of keep a running tally on your calculator. Identify all the unencumbered money first. Then look at the encumbered money, and you're going to add some, but not all, of the encumbered money. Let's recognize there's really kind of two types of encumbered money. Here's the little names I've given for them. These are just my personal names. I don't, I don't, I don't know anybody else who really uses these terms, although you could use them. You know, there's a difference between encumbered money that's still in your bank account. It's committed to somebody. It's earmarked for a particular household, but you haven't yet actually spent that money. Now, let's contrast that with another type of encumbered money, uh, and that is sometimes you've spent some of your encumbered money. Uh, consider uh, the rehab case of Ms. Green. Ms. Green uh, requests uh, repairs of her roof, her plumbing, and her electrical system. And uh, so let's say uh, that uh, your ship jurisdiction will do multiple draws when they provide assistance in that fashion. And let's say that you've encumbered $20,000, but, uh, you know, um, uh, a week goes by, and the contractor uh, submits an invoice, wants to be paid because he's, he's uh, fixed up the roof. Okay, so you pay him $5,000, and that project is still technically encumbered. But of the $20,000 project, $5,000 is now what we would call spent encumbered money. That $5,000 is no longer in our bank account. So what I'm saying is add together the sum total of your encumbered money plus your earmarked encumbered money. Add that all together, it's probably going to be a, a real big number. Now, compare that number to the current balance, the current balance in your local housing trust fund, the current balance in your SHIP account. Is it the same number? It should be. <laughs> the, the, uh, the balance in your state trust, in your local housing trust fund should be encumbered money and unencumbered money. Of course, there's not going to be any expended money in there because expended money has already been expended. And so those two balances should match. If they don't, well, if they don't, then the first thing you might check, the most likely cause of it, is that uh, you are missing some expenses on your tracking spreadsheet. So go back to the general ledger. Take a look at it, you know, kind of comb through those records and see if you're missing any expenses. Another common mistake is you're not missing an expense, but you've got the wrong number for the expense. Say in the end, Ms. Green's rehab job didn't cost $20,000, it cost $18,000. But maybe your tracking spreadsheet, because of something initially you had written in there, shows $20,000 have been expended, but no, when you look at the general ledger, you will discover only a sum total of $18,000 was spent. So you'll come back and you'll update or correct your tracking spreadsheets. Well, that's a br very brief tip on something that is actually a very large subject. But if you have any uh, problems in this way, you might want to check out your spreadsheets now. I'd encourage you to do this before June 30th. And uh, if you have any questions, maybe you might want to call me or my coworkers to assist you in trying to figure out uh, what's going on. Because only once you have your tracking spreadsheets for fully up to date and fully in agreement with your general ledger, only then will you be able to create annual reports referencing your tracking spreadsheets. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll very briefly just go through this. I've, I've already mentioned about the Single Audit Act. Uh, here's some tips for working with your finance department. You will need to ask your finance department probably uh, for a little bit of information. For example, you may need to know, say that you're sitting down on July 6th and you're creating your annual reports, and you don't yet know the sum total of program income for your 08-09 distribution. After all, I just said that you're sitting down there on like July 8th. Uh, your 09 uh, the 08 09 fiscal year has just ended on June 30th. So you may have to call up your finance department and say, hey, how much program income do we have for the 08 09 distribution? But remember, your finance department is on a different fiscal year than the state's fiscal year. And so when you ask that question, it would behoove you to say, how much bank interest did I receive from July 1st, 2008 through June 30, 2009? 
And then you could ask the same question. You know, you've asked the question about bank interest. You could then ask the question about how many repayments have I received during that time. So it's both of those uh, things, bank interest and repayments, both of those are program income. But remember also that your finance department has a different definition of expended than the definition that you use. When they cut a check, for example, to pay Ms. Green's rehab contractor when he gets paid the first $5,000 of a $20,000 job, they would call that money expended or spent. They may. Um, but that's not what we would call it. We would say that $5,000 has been spent on a project that is still encumbered money. And so that's just a, a helpful something to remember. We only use the term expended when we're talking about SHIP, the SHIP program. Expended only means money that has been paid for vendors for a project that is completed, it's been CO'd, and uh, for a house that, you know, is occupied by SHIP-eligible people. All those things have to be met before you can consider money fully expended. And, you know, one probably basic sort of thing, if you change something on one form, it will affect another form. We just saw that when I uh, had forgotten that I changed something in the FHC by the C jurisdiction. Uh, I changed something on form one, but oops, I forgot to change something on form number two. And what happened? There was an error message. So, good. That's enough of, uh, of all that. Here we are now at the end of all of what I wanted to share with you. I'm, un I'm unmuting the phones now in order to ask you what questions do you now have on anything that we've covered. Okay, thank you. Go ahead and speak up. Any questions on anything that we've covered? Michael. Yeah. Annie Gibson from the city of Lakeland. Hey there. In the certifications, when you have a decreased cost to newly constructed homes, mm -hmm. are you also including that? Surely you will. And um, uh, that might be the case where on a cover letter, okay, let's, let's take an example, Annie. Let's say that you had um, two items in the last 12 months that um, that one item – you know, like one ordinance will increase the cost of housing and one ordinance will decrease the cost of housing. Well, the certification form only asks for the bottom line, you know, the, bo the bottom line sum total of all increases slash decreases. So if one thing will increase uh, housing by a thousand dollars, you're going to have to, I have to, I have to mute the lines so we get the side conversations out of the way. I also want to encourage everybody to stop having side conversations while we're, uh, have unmuted phones. To finish answering your question, Annie, um, if the cost increase was $1,000 per unit, the cost decrease was $800 per unit, the number that you're going to put into the certification form will be $200 of increased cost per unit. And on your cover letter, you might want to explain about how there was a, 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 a item that decreased the cost of, of, of doing all this. Now, by the way, when I say cover letter, uh, you know, that would be the cover letter that you turn in with your printed out certification forms and you mail through the post office to Florida Housing. Okay? So I'm going to uh, unmute the phone. Uh, I'm really sorry. Annie, did that answer your question? Yes, sir, yes. Let me know, and I mean, I can. Okay, so somebody's talking, and we need and to I'm stop the side conversation. Meeting that I miss, um, uh, okay, so who else has a question? Michael, well, can you hear me? Can you yeah. Hear now? Okay. The question is um, on the PDF file that you're going to be sending, or someone's going to be sending to us. Is yeah. it going to have all the certifications as well? Uh, the certification forms, uh, this is a good question, and I can answer this by, um, here, once again, I have to mute these phone lines. I want to encourage everybody to stop their side conversations. Let me show you on the, so the answer is no. The PDF will not show you that. Uh, well, I mean, I do want you to know that one of the handouts that I sent was the regulatory certification. I didn't send you the other certification form, but let me show you that right here, on the annual report, there is another tab. I didn't mention it to you, but there's a references tab. And in the references is an option 
for you to download the certification forms, right? And um, I believe this is actually, this PDF is both of the forms combined into one document, since that's all of what you'll need to print off. Okay? And so I'll go ahead and once again unmute the phones. I understand you have to write, but you also have, okay. to, have to write as well. I have a question regarding the mortgage information on Form 4. Uh-huh. Right? Here, you were going through this, and you mentioned that this has that this applies to the first mortgage only? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. How would we know if a first mortgage is in default instead of foreclosure? Sure. Good question. And uh, the chances are you may not – there may be some people who are in default on their first mortgage, and you won't know that um, that they're in default. However – there's two ways that I can think of that a SHIP office may find out about this. First, a SHIP applicant may call, um, may call you and say, hey, I'm in default and I need some more housing assistance. Well, if that happens, you should kind of keep a little list off to the side of your desk and just write that information um, on there so that when it comes time once a year for the annual report, you have kind of an ongoing list of all those that you know have experienced default in the last 12 months. But um, let's consider that also because we have a ship lien on uh, each ship recipient's house, we normally do, um, if, if, uh, if a person, um, if, if a lender, if a first mortgage lender says, hey, you've been in default for some time, we're going to start the legal process of foreclosing on your house. When they file a list pendant, they will notify all the other lien holders, right, including your city or county uh, and, your, and your SHIP program. And so in this way, we may discover through this legal notice that a person is in default, and in fact, so in default that they may potentially lose their house to foreclosure. And so those would be the two ways that on a regular basis you can keep track of this and uh, no further um, action is required above and beyond what I just said. That's a great question. What other questions do we have? Anything else there? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to say that we have completed our training on time. And so it now remains for you to, um, to go and, and explore the annual report on your own. And so uh, go ahead and please do that. And you can now go ahead and sign off. If you have any other questions, please feel free to call the coalition at our toll-free number. And, uh, yeah, go ahead and start exploring this annual report on your own. Good luck with it.